Hey guys, this is Logic Crazy and I'm Jonathan and welcome to yet another chess engine tutorial. In this tutorial we're going to be looking at the perfed method, or at least uh, we'll be getting it started. So uh, what I've done, I'm not sure if I've already mentioned this, but I created another uh, uh, perf.java file and a little class here. And what I've done is create this method called perfed and it takes in all of the bitboards as well as all the empassant value and the castling of values. It also takes in a method that I've called white to move which uh, swaps between uh, uh, true and false. Uh, true meaning white, it's white's turn to move, false meaning it's black's turn to move, and then I have an integer of depth because when we are doing a perf search we don't want to search infinitely deep. We're only looking at every possible move to a depth of, let's say, three or whatever it is. So here's how we do this. Uh, we call this perf method, and we say if the depth is less than uh, perf max depth, and I've created this static integer. Uh, I've set to five. Let's set to one for now. And we also have these move counters, total move and move counter. Um, I believe at least the total move one isn't being used right now, so I will just leave it for now. And uh, what we do is we take a make string moves, and then if it's white's turn to move, we set the moves to the possible moves for white. Otherwise, we set it for the possible moves of black. This is fairly straightforward. And then what we do is we go through each of the moves. So what I have set up is a, a, a for loop where i starts at 0, and as long as i is less than moves.length, then we do i plus equals 4, because we're jumping by groups of 4. And then we would run this code, which I'd already shown, sort of commented uh, in my previous tutorial about all these uh, longs and stuff, and we make all of the moves. Now, I should mention that our empassant move was adjusted to include the white pawn boards, so we can make sure that when a piece is being pushed too forward, it is a pawn. And I just simply do that by setting the start as an integer, which I've done in the past. And then I say, if, the, if at the start location there is a pawn. That's basically what that little line does. So that just clarifies that up a bit. Uh, then we set our, all our booleans for our castling. Uh, castling isn't quite uh, yet fully debugged here, but um, this is sort of my idea, is we create all our castling. And again, I always put these things in temporary because um, what we're going to do is we're going to make the move on temporary boards and send all those temporary boards uh, to the next uh, iteration of this method. And then when we come back, our original boards haven't changed. So there won't be any undoing of moves. It just saves us that little step there. Um, so uh, back to this castling here. Uh, we say if the, car if the move is a regular move, so-called, I can just add that little code here. You are. I can't spell. Regular move. There we go. Then we set the start and um, we check uh, if all these things are possible. Now again, I'm noticing here, uh, not only do we need to make sure if it's a regular move, but we also need to make sure that the type that is being moved, um, and that's what we do here, we, we check um, if the type is a white king, then disable all castling for the white king, if the type is a black king, remove all castling privileges for the black. And uh, with the rooks, it's a little different. We check if the rook, if it is a rook move, and we also make sure that the piece moving is at its starting location. So for rooks, uh, white rooks, that's, those locations are 63 and 56, the bottom right and left corners. For uh, for blacks, they are at 7 and 0, and uh, that is just uh, a little extra I've just done just to make 
so that if the pieces array moved, uh, we wouldn't know, for instance, like once a piece is moved from its starting location, then we are not sure if it's the white rook or the black rook that we're dealing with. So I've restricted this only disable it when it's at starting location, because then we know if it's a if it's the kingside rook, then disable the kingside castling, and vice versa. Um, and once the move has been made and the castling parameters have been set, we then check if it's safe. So what we do is we say white king uh, after the move, obviously. So we put that little key for the temporary that we've changed, and moves dot unsafe for white and we make sure that's a zero so that those two don't intersect the plots that are unsafe and the white king and white to move um, and I add this here because if uh, the move checked the other player then it shouldn't uh, it should it's still a legal move it's only when your own p king is in danger after your own move that's not allowed. And I add the or of the opposite for the uh, blacks. And if all that's true, then I'll just skip this little line here about the perf move counter. Then we call perf with all the new temporary values. We call out not white to move, so we swap it. If it was true, now it's false. If it's false, now it's true. And then we set the depth to one greater. Um, now this little line here, is our per perfed move counter, which will just keep adding up every move we make, but only the leaf nodes. That is, only the nodes where the depth has reached the max depth get counted. So um, all the moves in between uh, that produce these end boards will not get counted, and that's our standard for a perfed uh, test. So what I have here is I've set their perf depth, uh, max depth to 1, and in user interface, I have called perfed, uh, uh, perfed dot perfed with all these values, starting it off with white to move, um, which is a value that I've set up here as true. It's a static uh, global variable here. and we start off here with uh, zero as our depth. So when I run this code now, let's see what happens. Just give it a second. All right. Uh, uh, what we need to do is we just have a blank board here. I need to say uh, to generate a new board. So I believe the, uh, the code was initiate standard chess. So I will just add that right here. Let's see. Um, whoops. Board generation dot initiate standard chess. There. Now let's run that. Stop that one and see if this gives us a little bit better results. All right, there we go. That's our starting position. And we have 20 moves. And uh, you should know that uh, 20 moves is the correct number of moves possible from the starting location. Now, if we do to a depth of 2, this will not only count all white's moves, but also all black's response moves. And we should get a value of 400. And there again, we get a value of 400. Now, for depths greater than 2, what I've created is a little text file, which I've put here in our source packages. You can just download it in the description below. And it takes, uh, this is the starting position. I should just uh, add that here. Starting position. And to a depth of 1, there are 20 moves. To a depth of 2, there's 400. And to a depth of 3, there's 8,902. There's also 34 captures and 12 checks that are included in this nodes count. Um, and these extra little indicators like emphasis and stuff, they're just useful for debugging purposes. So for instance, if at this depth, um, 
we had no errors. And then at step four, we did have errors. We could look and say, well, the only thing new is that there weren't any checkmates before, and now there are checkmates. So maybe our error is in the checkmates uh, category of error, um, perhaps. And so uh, those are useful to know what type of moves it could uh, be problematic with. So let's adjust our depth to this depth of 3 and see if we get 8,902. on the code, and we get 8,902, which is perfect. Um, I'm going to skip a step 4 and just jump into step 5. Now when we get to depths as great as 5, uh, there will be a few seconds delay. We haven't really optimized our code to make it super fast. We've just sort of been putting it together as it has uh, been most readable. Um, but in a few seconds, you should get a value. Now, at a depth of 5, we are looking at uh, 4.8 million. And you'll notice we got exactly 4.865609. That's exactly the right number of nodes to a depth of 5. Now, if we were to go even deeper and deeper, you'll notice even at a depth of 6, which would take even longer, instead of 4.8 million, we're dealing with about 120 million, uh, which would take way longer, and we still haven't experimented with castles or promotions, which is why we will end up having to start at a sort of mid-game position, a position that's already somewhat developed so that right off the bat, we can start debugging. Uh, so at a depth of four, we're already looking at castles and promotions and all sorts of that sort of stuff. And so we will have to set up the board to these middle positions. And these little lines here are just a uh, thin uh, notation for a certain position, this being the starting position of a chess game. So I hope that uh, this has been... Uh, useful into figuring out how to write a perfed algorithm. Obviously, another thing that is lacking here is that this perfed algorithm does not divide it up into each initial move. Um, what I would like to add is a way to uh, look at each of the 20 initial moves from the starting position and see how many moves followed after each one so that we can find out after which one of the initial moves the errors were found in which will be helpful for debugging. Until next time, enjoy Java.